Hey everybody, welcome to the show. I'm Luca Paris, and we're going on a culinary journey to one of my favorite places in the Keene area, Stonewall Farm. Sarah Barkhouse, one of the farmers over there, she probably has some specific title. I call her a farmer. She does great stuff. She gets me all my favorite produce all the times of the year. And around this time in June, where it's getting close to summer, the end of spring, greens are what's out there. Greens and herbs. And we're going to make a couple of salads. Uh, actually, we're going to make three great salads. One is going to, we're going to use some bok choy. We're also going to be using some other flavors throughout that salad, plus steak, because Lee won't let me do anything without steak. So we're going to do steak and bok choy. Then later on, we're going to do a pasta arugula salad, one of my mom's recipes, which are one of her favorites. And in the middle of that, we're going to have one with champagne vinaigrette. So don't go away. Sarah's going to join me. Your culinary journey starts now. Welcome journey to a culinary journey. This is our roving audience. We bring them with. Actually, did you bring them today? I did. You did. Yep. Yeah, you did. Yep. This is Sarah Barkhouse. Sarah, how's it going? Very good. You excited? I got you out of the fields. Yes. Come on the set. Yep. I even so, put a sweater on for you. I really appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> so the last time you, you had me almost like peeling stuff and going through things. Yeah, it was cold then. It was November. Yeah. We yeah. were picking Brussels sprouts yeah. and playing with manure. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's a whole different show. You don't compost. want to know all about that. Compost. <laughs> she calls it compost. I said one man's compost is whatever. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about greens today because that's what's coming up like crazy. It's sure is. Yep. And what are, so a couple of things you brought were bok choy. Right. Right. And then we have a mixed greens. Yep. We're going to be playing with some arugula, some fresh herbs, mm. which I love fresh herbs. Mm -hmm. And there's a, there is, what's the major difference between fresh herbs that you pick right away and stuff that you're buying? They're fresh. There you go. Ladies <laughs> and gentlemen, the show is over. <laughs> Let's go right wow. away into our first. Thing. You're so good. These at this. were picked and brought to you not even an hour ago. That's perfect. So they are still very live, very full of um, water and flavor, right. and I mean you can smell them just coming in the door. And one so. of the things I do when we talk about cooking, especially when you use fresh herbs in finishing off a sauce or anything, uh, cut them only when you need them, because again. They're fresher, the essential oils are right there, they're not getting lost, and the flavor's not getting lost. And the other thing I mentioned is um, use them l last in a dish. Mm -hmm. So if you're making a dish and you want to use some fresh herbs to finish it off, put it in last because then all those flavors just pop. Right. Because if you cook them too early, they all dissipate, right? And you overcook them? And yeah, that's okay. no good. That's, okay. Right? I'm learning. You're learning? You're telling me. <laughs> all right, let's get to our first salad. You're not a salad fan, are you? I have to no. be honest, if you put it between two pieces of bread, I'll eat it, okay. but unless, no. unless you make it with, you know, nuts and cheese and... How about steak? Good, oh, that works We're doing beef me. tenderloin. <laughs> I knew I could get you today. All right, so the first thing we're going to be making, I'm going to do the steak. I'm going to have you do the vinaigrette. We need a little bit of soy sauce. This is kind of a Thai-flavored um, vinaigrette. A little bit of fish sauce. You know what fish sauce is? Um, no, I'm not. Smell it. It smells fishy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Captain Obvious. <laughs> <laughs> well, what is fish sauce then besides fish? Uh, fish, from fish sauce is, is, is well. The original idea of a fish sauce is fermented fish. It adds a lot of flavor, and uh, in this case, it's just it's great. It's a great Asian dish that a lot of people love using. Just adds so much more flavor to our vinaigrette here. So we added a little bit of Dijon mustard, right? The other thing I'm going to do is we're going to cut up some lime juice in there, and then your job is going to be to whisk this all together for me. All right. You good with that? Yep. A little lime juice. How about some shallots? We'll put in some shallots too. Sounds good. Now, do you do a lot of cooking too, or do you? I do. I'm the cook in my family. You are? Yep. What are some of the things you like to make? Um, gosh, put me on the spot here. That's what I do. 
What do I, see, I make? I got to cover with, with the amount of time we got, you know? Gosh, I'm like actually drawing I'm cutting a shots. blank. <laughs> yeah. I really like to cook like um, quesadillas and burritos. Like nice. I said, you put it between some kind of bread and I'm a big fan of it. You're a big sandwich fan. Yeah. So, and it, but you love to, uh, tell it, oh, you know what was cool? You, you have a background that's not farming, right, initially? Um, or far, is it farming or growing? What do you call this? Well, oh, well, I have a, I have a degree in horticulture. Oh, in horticulture. Yep. That's what it is. Yep. And then you came out to check out the farm and... Well, I started as an intern at right. the farm um, probably five years ago. Uh-huh. And started and said, oh, I'm just doing this for the experience, and right. at Stonewall seems like a great place to work, and um, by the end of the season, I said I want to be a farmer. And you so, never left. And I never, and then I went back to school, and and then I've been at Stonewall ever since. That's so awesome. Yep. Beautiful farm right here it in Keene. It is. Gorgeous um, place to go to work every day. Exactly. Whoop. Let's go. So what All we right. have in there, we have garlic, shallots, we have Dijon mustard. Yes, we have fish sauce, and we have Soy sauce. So glad I brought you along today. <laughs> All right. So why don't you start with this? This is what you're going to do. Ready? Yep. We're going to start getting oil in there. Put it in there. This Go is on. what you call a whisk? Yeah, that's oh a little boy. whisk. That's an immersion blender. All right. It's going to help Put it right us. In. Now, let me, let me just help you with it. <laughs> I'm more scared than you are. I... We're just going to start getting it whisked, whisked together, right? Okay. That's what you're going to do. All right. And I'm going to pour the oil. All right. All right, everybody. Here we go. <laughs> This is all we're doing the rest of the show. Now, <laughs> help me out there. Now, the idea of pouring the oil into the immer into the uh, vinegar a little bit at a time, stop that for a second. I don't even know if they could hear us over that. <laughs> the idea about pouring is actually to, to create a emulsification where the oil and the vinegar are now going to, or in this case, the, 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 um, the essence of the lime is giving us the citrus mm -hmm. for that. But by doing that together, we're going to create almost like a paste for it. Okay. Or it's going it's to emulsify together. That's why we do a little bit at a time. So you get going again. There we go. I'm going to let you keep doing that. You're going to help emulsify the rest of that. While she's doing that and making a ton of noise, I'm going to sear our steak. Because Sarah said she doesn't want to have a salad without steak. <laughs> Where'd you put our steak, Sarah? I'll be right back. Don't go away. There it is. I'm going to use some beef tenderloin. Season with a little salt and pepper. How's it coming? Still got a little garlic in there. All right. All right. Chop all that garlic up. There you go. Now, are you out in the field every day picking? Oh, yeah. Every day, but Sunday. But Sunday? Sunday is my day of rest. <laughs> Literally. Now, how long does it take to grow salads? And I think that's perfect. All right. Yeah, let's Great. leave it at that. Can I put this right down? Yeah, just put it right over there. We want to add, we're going to add some uh, fresh herbs to that. How right. how uh, how long does it take for stuff to grow again once you once you let's say the mixed greens? Right. Does it grow pretty quickly? It takes about um, about four weeks to grow a good crop of greens. Okay. Yeah, and then if you cut it, it'll grow back again. It'll with the lettuce, it grows a nice second crop. With the mesclun and arugula, we only cut it once. Oh, okay. And then we just hoe it out and sow a new crop. Sow a new crop, and then. So every four weeks you have a new crop. Right. And how much do you plant? Is it a lot? Um, we plant, gosh, uh, our beds that we plant our greens in are about 120 feet long. So we maybe do 60 feet of arugula and 60 feet of mescaline, 60 feet of lettuce, about every other week. Wow. Yeah, and we keep up with that from the first week of April through September. That's incredible. Yep. All right, so what I've done here is I've seared both sides of the beef beef tenderloin medallions. We salt and peppered it. What I'm going to do is let this rest so we get to a nice medium rare to rare. Do you like it? How do you like your beef? I like it medium. Medium? Yep. All right. Medium the show rare. Just medium got rare. longer. No, nope, medium rare is just fine. <laughs> okay. <good. laughs> you know, there is a time constraint on the show. That's why rare is the best way to go. Yeah. All right. And what we're going to do is we're gonna, we have our dressing. It looks nice. Yeah. A little chunky. Those little pieces chunky. of garlic are going to be fun. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. All right. What I would like you to do, maybe tear up some fresh mint. Okay. Just tear that in. We'll pop that right in there. Is that tarragon or is that? This is summer savory. Ooh. You smell and tell me. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Not for that, but it's nice. I'm going to keep that. <laughs> Bring that home. What else we got there? We've got some fresh dill. Fresh dill. 
Save that for another cilantro. Part of the show. Cilantro. Well, I definitely. I mean, Ooh. I'm not the <gasps> chef, but I Let's think that cilantro. would that would go. Yeah, see? and some. <laughs> <laughs> She's trying to tell me something. And some dill. <laughs> All right. I mean, beautiful. some uh, chives, chives, excuse me. Beautiful. All right, we'll use that to garnish the, the thing. All right. But, ooh, that cilantro smells Am wonderful. Am I putting too much mint in yes. there? Yes. All right. But that's okay. Stop. I'm not the chef. You tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Are we almost close to medium rare? Not really. Let's get that in. Oh, you didn't chop it up, huh? Oh, shoot. No, I'm no. kidding. I don't We're have, fine. This you is your ceramic knife. knife. Yeah, you're not allowed to touch my knife. All right, so do you want me to nope. whisk no, no, it no, again? No, 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 that's good because you know what? It's going to mix up with the greens. We're going to pop the greens in there. You want to chop me up some bok choy? Sure. We're going to take some bok choy in that. And I'm going to get a, a bowl okay. or a plate. We'll do a big plate. Can, I use, your, can I use your special knife? You can knife? use my special All right. knife. I'm not that. Can I give it a rinse? Room. Give it a rinse. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Try that one out. Don't follow her. Stay with me, oh, guys. Oh, jeez. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Stay with me. It's rinsed. It's rinsed. Exactly. <laughs> You're good at this. <laughs> it's all about the TV. All right, so here, chop away. All right. Uh, so I, when I cook it at home, I do it in small pieces like that. Does okay. that work? Yeah, that's beautiful. Right. We're not cooking. We're going to serve it fresh. Oh, all right. Yeah, nice and crunchy. So then we want to go smaller with it. Smaller. Thinner. Yeah. This is a really nice knife. Uh, isn't it? I'm going to have to get one of these. I think you should. Your kitchen store. Located just on say, Main Street. Just saying, that's all. <laughs> all right. Let's get... <laughs> Let's get a little bit of that, a little bit of that in there. Just mix it up. And then we'll move that all out of the way because okay. you know how we are. We're so nice and tidy. <laughs> and if you want to mix that up for me, let's see. Why don't you mix that up? We'll get that on the plate. I'll start cutting the steak. All right. Oh, it's a little rare. OK, I guess I'll have to eat this for you. <laughs> but So this is a. Uh, pretty much a, a Thai bok choy salad. Now bok choy, what, if people haven't had it before, what would you say it tastes like? Or mm. what, do you, what do you think it? It's um, the lower part the, the, from the stem is really succulent. Right. It's got a lot of water and um, it's very crisp. And then the upper leaves are a little thinner. And it's, it's got a, a mild cabbage like flavor not yeah, too spicy it's, it's in the cabbage family right um considered it, an asian green yeah and, and it cooks really well too i mean cooking bok choy is really yeah well. and that's what most people yeah do. i love to they saute it, it and do a like a stir fry with it what a beautiful job you did here. thank you and what's great in this salad and i think that's the thing about salads a lot of people say well i don't like salads they're kind of boring one we have a ton of flavor in here two we have differences in texture where the bok choy has this crunch to it. Mm -hmm. And then every once in a while, you're going to get a big piece of garlic because we didn't get that all nice. in there, which is really interesting. Unless you don't like garlic, then it's just awkward. <laughs> but <laughs> and then we're going to put the steak tip, the steak over the top wow. of it. Oh, this looks so good. Mm -hmm. All right, so when we come back, we're doing champagne, champagne vinegar and arugula, I believe. And oh, does that look good? Would you like to come cook lunch for the farm? Sure. Every right day? Now? Every day. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> you never know. Hey, me and my savory and Sarah will be right back, so don't go away. <laughs> They need coffee. They were, you should have heard them the last show. They were screaming at me. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to A Culinary Journey. I'm Luca Paris. This is? God, your name, your name. Oh, your I'm name. Sarah Barkhouse. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> hey, they don't know what I'm going to throw that to them. I Sarah, thought the audience was going to yell gonna it out for you. <laughs> OK, let's try it. This is? Sarah Barkhouse. <laughs> we oh. only met yesterday. Yeah, so. apparently. <laughs> They got oh, the first make, name right, though. Hey, you mentioned salads that you do like and don't like. You like mm. nuts, you like yeah. pears, you like cheeses. And yeah. So this, this one is, is, is actually one of my wife's favorites, too. I need all that extra stuff because I work so long out right. in the field. And, I, you know, so and just the greens are not enough for me. Not going to work. Because yeah. you could just eat the greens while you're out in That's the field. That's true, and it's, I do sometimes. Exactly. <laughs> well, we, got, we have a couple of components going on. We're going to do a arugula salad. You're going to make us a champagne vinaigrette. Okay. It's going to be a hand emulsified one, so it's kind of a loose vinaigrette. We're going to add some oil, probably a little bit of shallots to it, 
and um, the vinegar, the champagne vinegar. You're going to kind of work that out. And then right. you're going to put in whatever, whatever herbs you want to put in. All right. All right? You're in charge of that. What I'm doing over here is I started a poach of my, my pear. I took pear. It's half water and half white wine. Okay. I'm going to put a touch of sugar. Tell me when, Sarah. Oh, good. Oh, okay. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I need. A little sugar in there. We're going to let that reduce down. We're going to start that from there. Uh, then here, which is getting a little too hot, so I'm going to take it away from the pan. You do take that too? All the time. <laughs> well, look what I do. I talk instead of watch my pan. That's what I do. So we're going to let that cool off just a little. We're going to let that cool off. And then I'm gonna, we're going to take the nuts, the walnuts, mm -hmm. and take a little bit of the local honey. No, we're going to take the local maple syrup. Yep. And we're going to make that happen. And we're going to use some of the local honey in your vinaigrette also. All right. Sounds good? Sounds very good. All right. So your first thing, I'm going to give you the bowl. Okay. <laughs> you do the harder work. There's a little bit of the champagne vinegar. Here's some salt and pepper. A little drizzle of honey. Mm, tell me when. Uh, good. Okay. Yeah, I was stopping whether you told me or not. I remember the last time. And then... <laughs> And then why don't you start whisking that up? Okay. And you're gonna add a little bit of oil at a time. Okay? Oh. And that's our dressing. Multitasking. Yeah, let's see if you can do it. I'm gonna go take a break. She's gonna do the rest of the show. I'm gonna No? Can Look at me go. You are good. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanna show you something real quick though. Yeah. So it's a cool idea. If people are at home and they need to do that, what you do is you take your dish rag, pick up your bowl, take your dish rag, put the bowl on top. Mm-hmm. And if we did it right, now do it. I was hoping it would spin on you, but I guess it didn't. But now it doesn't move at all. No. Looks exactly like it did before. It feels very secure, though. Yes, it does. <laughs> all right. All right, so while you're doing that, I'm just roasting or pan toasting the walnuts. And what we want to do is let the essential oils come out. We'll let them cook. You don't add anything to this. So we're going to caramelize them with the, with the maple syrup. But we don't add anything to this right now. What we want to add... No. All, right. All right. Don't look at me. Just concentrate on what you're doing. No, you can look at me. Uh, we just want that, the natural oils to come out. We want to toast them down. Keep it down on low heat until we get nice and warm. And they're going to cook by themselves, so flipping them around is really important. And then right at the last minute, right from Stonewall Farm. That's right. Right? The farm it's, uh, does honey, too. We had add... a very good maple syrup year. Was it good? Yes, very good. Do you know the different grades of honey yet? Of syrup? Syrup. That's what I meant. I um, was testing you. I know that I like the dark stuff. You do. <laughs> There's grade A, light, light, grade B, you know, dark and medium. Right. And, but I Ooh. think the darker the better. It smells delicious. <laughs> Is this a good amount of oil or do I need more? No, I think we're good. All right. You're at a good So spot. now I can put the herbs in? Yeah. And now what I'm going to let happen is that the uh, maple syrup is going to reduce down and it's going to get thicker and thicker and it's going to coat the walnuts until they are beautifully coated. Oh, look at that. That's going to be absolutely gorgeous. See that? It's mm. going to be on top of our salad. It's bubbling. And Should what kind I, of herbs? Um, I'm going to do, I'm starting with mint. Can I have a knife to chop or do I just tear? You are very needy, aren't you? <laughs> All right, hold on. Here's your knife. Thank Good luck you. With that. Thank you. You even have a glass of wine. Yes, I How do. How did you get a glass of wine and I didn't? You have a bottle of wine. Oh, I do. I do. <laughs> Funny girl. All right. So we got a couple of things. So what are we putting in for her? Now I am putting in some chives. Chives. So you did mint and chives. Yep. Yummy. I'm going to do it all. I like Go crazy. I'm done. I'm just waiting on you now. No, I need okay. to poach the parallel. But look, see how nice they came out? Look. They're coated. Perfect. Oh, they're going to be so good. And uh, we're going to do them warm. and We're going to put them on the salad warm. And then also the pears, when they're done and they're not that far away, those are going to go on warm. And then you have a cold salad. We're going to finish it off with a little crumbled gorgonzola. Oh. Sounds good. Let's take a moment. I'm not going to do all that dill. That's no, too much dill. Oh, that smells delicious. Can I keep doing this? Yep. All right. So what do we got left? Summer savory. Summer savory. What is summer savory? It. it I knew I'd give you a stump. <laughs> I'm stumped. Good I'm job. Stumped. <laughs> I, I think it's a Mediterranean type herb, and yeah. um, we grow winter savory as well, which is a lot stronger right. of a flavor, so better for drying and. And um, it, it does exactly what it what you say. It makes things a little more savory. It just gives you that nice bite. Great finish, and with all the other herbs in here, it's just going to add to it. Oh, that smells delicious, mm. doesn't it? Yep. All right, so I think my pears are actually poached. We don't want them too soft where they're going to fall apart. <laughs> As she takes a wine break, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. 
All right, so let's take that. Let's take our fresh arugula. Okay. Toss it in there, and I'll put on the toppings. How's that? Sounds, Sounds great. Good? Oh, we're going to have so much fun with this. Now, the, one of the differences, do you, is, it, uh, is Stonewall an organic farm? Or is Stonewall is an organic it's farm. It's an organic yep. farm. All of our veggies are organic, and our, our milk from our dairy is organic as so well. You do milk? You also do ground beef or no? We do. Yep. The ground beef is a by byproduct from the dairy. From, from the dairy cows. Right. Um, okay. So retired dairy cows and they're 100% grass fed and organic grain in the winter. So basically what you're saying is for all the cows that are watching our show today, don't retire. <laughs> Keep making that yeah, milk. Yeah, stay productive. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> I'm just saying. But it's, it's gorgeous beef because awesome. it's all made into ground beef. So. Right. Oh, yeah. it's, and it's wonderful yeah. stuff. So why don't you get that plated on there? Let's see how I did with a couple of pears over the top. Oh, that is beautiful. Another product we started to make this uh, last fall is our own cheddar cheese. Really? From our milk. Yep. Maybe we should put some of that on there. Uh, let's stick with the gorgonzola, okay. but it is very good cheese. Put some apple. Um, did I call these apples just now? <laughs> pears. Pears, pears. But also, pears. that's another thing in this. Uh, if you do something like this where you're using local ingredients, whether and it's maple syrup, and then when it's apple season around here, you know, places like Allison's, they, they have right. their own apples. Right. They also have their own pears, which is what I love. Mm -hmm. And then we'll just take our walnuts. Now these are, these are great cool too. Um, and more than likely you do this ahead of time, let them cool down. And then this way you put it over the top. So this way no one burns themselves while they're caramelizing. And then the last second, we have to leave a part of this without this on it. Cause I know some people don't like gorgonzola. That looks awesome. That's beautiful. That's easy. <laughs> That's how quick and easy it is. I mean, we did it within minutes. It's a great salad. It has a ton of flavor using local ingredients. Where's my maple syrup that I get to keep? Stonewall Farm Stonewall maple syrup. Stonewall Farm maple syrup. <laughs> and you said a great season. Yeah, it really okay. was. All right. Yeah. When we come back, we're going to do one last salad, which is one of my mom's favorites, using arugula. We'll use tomatoes. And then when we can get tomatoes in season, that's a great thing to do. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to show you what to do with tomatoes that aren't in season and how to make them taste better. All right. We'll add that to the arugula. So don't go away. We're going to have some of this, and we'll see you in a culinary minute. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome back to a culinary journey. Look, watch me. There you go. <laughs> they're, they're not totally trained just yet, but we're working on it. Sarah, how are you having fun? I'm having a great time. All right, so the last thing I want to do when you're telling me you're going to bring me some arugula, it's one of my mom's favorite dishes. I've done it on the show before, but I love using fresh arugula with that. Mm -hmm. It's called pasta arugula salad. <laughs> All right. Look at that. All right, Captain she, Obvious. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> it's Sergeant. Thank you. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> <All> right, anyway, <laughs> what we're going to do, <laughs> that was a good one. You're good. We should do this more often. So what we're going to do is going to add some arugula to the pendant that we already cooked. Now, this time of the year doesn't allow us to get tomatoes, right? Not mm, yet? Not unless you're uh, starting them in a greenhouse, in a greenhouse really early and putting a lot of heat into that greenhouse. Exactly. It is and possible, but um, there's some tomatoes starting to show up at the farmer's market right now, but the, just, the most of them won't come until, you know, July. So when you can do this with fresh tomatoes, it makes all the difference in the world. What I'm finding by, by these kind of tomatoes that you buy... Uh, now, is if you could warm them up a little bit, and I throw them on a grill, whether it's a grill pan or outside, mm -hmm. you warm them up a little bit, some of their natural sweetness comes right mm -hmm. back out because you're caramelizing it. We've talked about that before in the show. But it just, you're bringing out all these natural flavors. So what I did is I put a little salt and pepper, and I've done, um, just put them on the grill just like that. Now, what I'm going to add to this, because I like the way shallots taste even better, my mom uses red onions. And I just think they're a little strong. Mm -hmm. So I like to add some shallots to this dish. They're a little bit lighter. Okay. So if you put in the arugula for me, okay. you could do that. And this is such a super easy summer salad. Now, it's great. Originally, at my house, it started as a hot pasta dish. We took the arugula, we took the red onions, and a little bit of olive oil and the tomatoes. And we, would, we put that in the refrigerator and kind of let sit mm -hmm. with the olive oil. And that started it, and then you take a hot pasta, and as the pasta comes out, you dump it into the salad, and you serve it as a warm pasta dish. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so good. But then we started having company over who always liked it, and they say, well, can you do it as a salad? And one of my wife's favorite salads is this. 
So she, she gets to have it all the time when my mom comes up to visit. All right, so you got that? You got yep. that? Yep. Let's see if we can get these off of here. And when I talk about simple, and that's some of the best thing about doing things locally, is just using the ingredients and letting them speak for themselves, right? All right, a little bit of olive oil. You ready to toss? Yes. You toss. High olive oil. Just a touch of olive oil. A little more. A little more. Keep tossing. <laughs> All right, you're doing well. And the tomatoes warm in there, really good. Yeah. And a little salt and pepper. That's gorgeous. Yeah. Isn't that Put a dish? Yeah. yeah. Go right on to there. Well, that's all we have time for. It was a pleasure. Thanks for joining me. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. You had a good time? Yes, absolutely. Are you going back out to the field? To um, today's our CSA pickup. So oh, we awesome. are going to be waiting for uh, about 30 share members to come to the farm nice. and pick up their box of veggies we today. We still have room for shares? We do. We have room for a couple more shares if people awesome. are interested. We're, the summer share is already going, but nice. we can squeeze you in for sure. Stonewall yeah. Farms, a nonprofit organization in yep. New Hampshire. Yep. Doing great things for the community. Yeah, we're trying to get people connected to agriculture and see what a working farm is all about. Well, this, was a, this was a blast. Thanks for bringing some of your produce in. You're welcome. And you've been great. You can come back anytime. Thank you. As long as you bring food. <laughs> okay, that's usually what people tell me. Well, <laughs> We're talking about food, we'll have more food on the next show, but this has been a blast. Stonewall Farm, Sarah, thank you again. You're we'll see you next time on A Culinary Journey. <laughs>